Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and to vote in the polls, and like and subscribe for better teeth next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Austin Powers, a parody of James Bond that ends up being a better character because he understands affirmative consent and makes a genuine effort to adapt to the era he's in. You know what's really groovy, baby? Respecting women. <laughs> Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need the Mojo, a charming personality that extends to the point of lavish musical numbers and entire parades worth of dance. Maybe you were born with it, maybe it's Quincy Jones, it's Quincy Jones. Next, we need to do a Judo Chop, a technique so secret it has nothing to do with Judo. Finally, we need some time travel. Just don't overthink it. And you know what else you don't need to think about too much? your internet data, as long as you're using today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark will let you be an international man of mystery because it's international. You can use Surfshark VPN to disguise your IP address and pretend you're in any number of countries all around the globe. Use this to get around region blocked content and watch what you want to watch even if it's not available on American Netflix. And if you want to stay mysterious, great news. Surfshark is encrypting your data as you're searching and shopping online. Line, hiding it from your ISP, search engines, hackers, data thieves. Anyone who would want those tasty, tasty crumbs of information isn't going to get them while Surfshark's running. My favorite part is that Surfshark works on an unlimited number of devices just with one account. That's your smartphone, your gaming console, your tablet, any browser you got. If you're using the internet, you can use Surfshark to protect your data. So if you want to start off the new year with some safer browsing, click the link in the description. That's surfshark.deals slash two lock that'll get you 83 percent off and three months free so click the link in the description and get safer today now back to the video for stats we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook over stats if you want just keep those multi-classing minimums in mind this one's gonna get busy we'll start off with charisma you need a magnetic personality that honestly makes it hard to just run around town without gaggles of gals chasing you dexterity next if you want to be an international man of mystery sometimes you've got to sneak around wisdom after that you know your animals you'll never forget a pussy cat constitution after that if you're going to be frozen for a couple of decades cold damage shouldn't be an issue strength is a bit low you're not much of a bruiser but we'll drop intelligence you missed out on a lot of history, you're basically the British Captain America. So like, Captain Britain. Captain Britain has psychic powers. Austin is a human, but he's a charming one, so we'll make him a variant human and grab the lucky feat. That'll help you get lucky. That gives you three luck die that you can use to re-roll an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw, or make an enemy roll their attack against you with disadvantage. It's just sort of a je ne sais quoi. I know that means something in French, but I don't know what. Bump your wisdom and charisma with your two free points, take investigation for your skill of choice to make up for your low intelligence score, and the spy background for stealth and deception. You might own a nightclub, lead a band, and own a photography business, but your main job has to be for queen and country. We'll kick things off as a bard to get those artsy professions under our belt. Remember, bards don't have to be musicians. They could also be photographers, models, painters, any kind of art. Bards are real renaissance men. They can grab any three skills they want. You could even grab performance, persuasion, and sleight of hand. Do that. Grab those skills. You can also grab spells and cantrips. Friends let you use your mojo to get advantage on charisma checks for a minute, though after the minute is up, you'll be less charming and they'll probably try to kill you. Pretty standard spy stuff, actually. Flirting, then attempted murder. Vicious Mockery lets you make jokes so bad they force a wisdom saving throw on a creature, dealing one d for psychic damage to those that fail and giving them disadvantage on their next attack. Not a good time to lose one's head. Charm person is like friends, but it costs a first level slot and charms a humanoid for an hour after they fail a wisdom saving throw. So it's actually pretty different, but both make you a sexy beast, baby. Yeah. Quick note for players and DMs, charm person isn't mind control and using it for a sexy scene is really gross. Playful flirting with charm person? Fine. Just don't escalate it to an uncomfortable point and always have safety rules in your game, everyone. Comprehend languages lets you understand all spoken and written languages, though it's kind of a fourth wall break to read the subtitles. If any class were to do it, it would make sense that it was barred. Tasha's hideous laughter is kind of like vicious mockery, except it doesn't deal damage, instead forcing a creature to fall prone and remain incapacitated for a minute, though they can reroll the save if they take damage. Still, a full minute of gut-busting playful laughter? They must be watching the first movie. Featherfall lets you reduce falling damage for up to five falling creatures as a reaction. It could be your literal Union Jack parachute, or it could be moving the body of a rival spy in front of you before you fall. It's fine, she still isn't gonna die. Of course, the main draw of Bard is Bardic Inspiration, letting you give allies D6s to add to ability checks, attack rolls, or saving throws. You have an amount of these equal to your Charisma modifier per long rest. That lets you spread the mojo around, and here, I was hoping you had protection. Second level Bards get Song of Rest, letting your allies heal an extra D6 of HP on their short rests, bust out a little BBC, or Daddy Wasn't There. I thought those were covers. Nope, original songs written and performed.
outperformed by the movie, Mike Myers is a very talented guy. You're also a jack of all trades, letting you add half your proficiency bonus to any skill check you're not proficient with. It's a godsend in roleplay heavy campaigns, and I'm guessing you didn't want to be Austin Powers in a meat grinder. This is Austin Powers in a meat grinder. Help! I'm in a meat grinder! How did I end up in this meat grinder? Look at the size of this meat grinder! Something like that. For this level spell, Disguise Self lets you change your appearance for an hour. I don't think anyone has ever mentioned this, but you bear a striking resemblance to Dr. Evil. Third level bards get expertise in two skills, doubling your proficiency bonus when you use them. Performance and persuasion are the picks. You're more likely to talk your way out of a situation than avoid one. You also get a bardic college, and Glamour was a few years after Psychedelia, but they haven't put that subclass in, so here we are. As a Glamour bard, you get Mantle of Inspiration, letting you spend your inspiration to give a number of creatures equal to your Charisma modifier, five temporary HP, and they can use their reaction to move without provoking opportunity attacks. It lets you lead a parade. Hell yes. You also get Enthralling Performance, letting you charm a number of creatures equal to your Charisma modifier for an hour after a minute-long performance. That's even more people in your parade. Thank God for Quincy Jones. As if all that weren't enough, you also get second-level spells. Enthrall lets you force a Wisdom saving throw on creatures in a 60-foot radius. Failing that, they have disadvantage on perception checks against other creatures, helping you be the distraction. Kind of the anti-spy, almost like a parody of one. Four-level bards get an ability score improvement, put that charisma higher for more mojo. I'm just gonna call charisma mojo from now on. For this level spell, enhance ability lets you give a creature advantage on skills of a certain type. If you choose strength, their carrying capacity is doubled. If you choose dexterity, they don't take falling damage from heights of 20 feet or less. And if you choose constitution, they get 2d6 temporary HP. It's basically a different form of inspiration that lasts for an hour, depending on your concentration. Fifth level bards get a font of inspiration, letting you recover your inspiration on short rests instead of long rests, and your inspiration die is a d8. Or if you use mantle of inspiration, they get 8 HP for a healthier parade. After last year, I don't think I'd ever feel healthy marching in a parade, but maybe we'll get there someday. You can also learn third level spells, sending once you communicate with any creature on the same plane, or even other planes, letting you talk to Basil Exposition. whoop de doo Six level glamour bards get Mantle of Majesty, letting you cast the command spell as a bonus action every round for up to a minute without expending a spell slot. That lets you give a creature a one word command, like drop to make them drop a weapon. It's really more something your dad does, just tell the henchman you're gonna win. You probably were anyway. For this level spell, Hypnotic Pattern lets you force a wisdom save if you're on creatures in a 30 foot cube, charming them and leaving them incapacitated, probably a bit distracted by all the flashing lights and psychedelic imagery. Seventh level bards get a fourth level spell like Charm Monster, which is like Charm Person, but it works on non-humanoids, so even the fembots will be wooed by your dancing. Eighth level bards get another ability score improvement, cap off your mojo for the only thing that can stop evil, power of love, baby, or charming spells and dance numbers. Either way, for this level spell, Locate Creature will let you find a creature within 1,000 feet of you, and what direction it's moving in, helping you find Dr. Evil and stop him. You're the only one who can, even if you're not so different. Ninth level bards can learn fifth level spells. Legend lore will give you the true Basil Exposition, letting you know more about a person, place, or thing of legendary renown. The more you already know about it, the more you learn. It's literally a spell you can cast to force your DM to give you an exposition dump. Pretty great. Tenth level bard is also great. Your inspiration die bumps up to a d10. You get expertise in two more skills, like stealth and sleight of hand, to be a decent spy when you need to spy, but the best part is magical secrets, letting you grab two spells from any list. Fortune's favor gives you or another creature another luck die, almost like you traveled back in time to stop Dr. Evil and save the girl with a double entendre for a name. Skill empowerment is actually on the bar list, but I still want it to give a creature expertise in the skill they're proficient with, helping you round off your skills with whatever you need, or helping the girl with the double entendre name be better. Up to you. And lasts for an hour, depending on your concentration. 11th level bards get 6th level spells, the most fun of which is Irresistible Dance, forcing a creature to dance which uses all their movement and gives them disadvantage on attack rolls and dexterity saving throws. Other creatures will also have advantage on attack rolls against them for a minute. The first round, they gotta dance. After that, they can make a wisdom saving throw. Otherwise, they're joining you for a minute long dance number. Some people say that bard players just want to goof around and not take anything seriously. I don't disagree, I just don't think it's a bad thing. 12th level bards get another ability score improvement, dexterity will be great for when we start Start multi-classing. Hey, we should start multi-classing. We're gonna multi-class into Monk to be kind of good at fighting thanks to martial arts, letting you make unarmed attacks with your dexterity modifier. They deal 1d4 plus your dexterity modifier and damage, and you can even make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you make one with your action. That's a judo double chop. You can't do this while you're wearing armor, so it's a good thing you get unarmored defense. Being your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor, you could walk around naked with only the opening credits to keep the movie PG-13. Second level monks get key points they can use to do cool English stuff like step the wind to or disengage as a bonus action and double your jump distance for the ultimate wire fighting maneuver. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action. It stops being a comedy if you end up with more than bumps and bruises. Glory of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your bonus action. That's like slap chopping speed. And you don't have to spend any key points on unarmored movement. It just makes you faster as long as you keep it light, helping you outrun your adoring fans. Third level monks get to choose a monastic tradition and drunken masters are the funniest thanks to the drunken technique, letting you 
disengaged for free with extra movement speed after a flurry of blows. International spies practically invented hitting and quitting, though this time it isn't metaphorical. You can also deflect missiles, letting you reduce damage from incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level. You could catch bullets with your teeth and even throw them back with a key point if you drop the damage down to zero, probably why your teeth don't look so great. Fourth level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction, helping you save spell slots on feather fall. You also get another ability score improvement, push your dexterity up for better everything that isn't charming people. You're already the best at that. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, that's two attacks with your action, or up to four with a flurry of blows, and each one of those will deal a d6 instead of a d4, since your martial arts die increases here. Most importantly, you get the judo chop, also known as stunning strike, letting you force a constitution saving throw on a creature you hit with a weapon attack, stunning them until the end of your next turn if they fail. It only costs a key point, but it will be a bit tricky to pull off since your wisdom isn't all that high. Six level monks get key empowered strikes, making your unarmed attacks magical in terms of overcoming resistances. I don't know what sort of defenses a shark with a freaking laser beam attached to their head would have, but this should cover you. You also get tipsy sway to stand up from prone with five feet of movement, and the ability to spend a key point to make someone who misses you with a melee attack hit someone else within five feet of you. That's some slapstick silliness that will also help you beat the bumbling henchman. Seven level monks get stillness of mind, letting you remove an effect of charming or frightening as an action, so the mojo won't work on you. You can't mojo a mojo work. There's also evasion, letting you take half damage from a failed dexterity save and no damage from successful ones. Danger is your middle name after all, can't be worried about danger. Our capstone is the 8th level of monk for one last ability score improvement. I recommend bumping up that wisdom for a better judo chop and better AC to dodge more hits and bamboozle more bozos. Now that we've had level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you're really bringing the charm. Bards are good at charming, but glamour bards take it to an absurd level. You're also loaded up with skills, and even the skills you're bad at, you're pretty good at. Finally, inspiring allies is great, and you've got ways to make all of your allies more bulky, faster, you're just a really fun guy to be around. For weaknesses, those monk levels aren't doing a lot for you. Bardonkadonk is a funny name for a bard monk subclass, but it doesn't make it good. You also don't have a lot of damage, with your die capping off at a d6 and your attack modifier not being capped at all. Finally, it's a good thing Dr. Evil doesn't just shoot you, your HP is somewhere in the low hundreds. But fighting isn't your bag, baby. Do things that are your bag, baby. Dance around and have a good time. And do what an international man of mystery does best. Just know that this isn't exactly power built. It might only be fun a couple of times. Two and a half at best. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, subscribe for more. We're making two videos every week this year. Join the Patreon to vote for Nebula, Tai Lung, or Tokuyami, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.